On this episode of Kev Boss Garage, we're bringing this piece of shit back to life and driving it 400 miles back home. Here we are in Elizabethton, Tennessee, where the car is located and where it sat for the last 10 years. I purchased it off my buddy Randy, who's the tall guy here in the blue shirt. He never did anything with it because of document issues. And, well, document issues that are now my issues. So this car was so forgotten that he didn't even have pictures of it anymore. And the only pictures I've had of it for the last year is this Google Earth Street View, which it looks magnificent in. As you can see, we're trailering the car. Reason being is we can't work on it here. We're going to trailer it to another buddy's house who lives in Lebanon, Tennessee, where we're going to attempt to get it running, driving, stopping, and then cruise it 400 miles back home to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Let me show you around the car. There she is in all her beauty. 65 Ford Fair Lane, not the 500, the standard two-door sedan. Actually, she don't look half bad. A little bit of rust in the rear quarters. Those uh, need some attention. I got disc, not disc brake. I got drum brake rebuilding kits for it. We got hubcaps for this Ford, and they say Chevy. So here she is, her inline six. This is a 200 six, uh, and actually doesn't look too bad. We pulled the dipstick here earlier. She's got clean oil. Doesn't smell burnt or anything. And then our ATF over here on this side doesn't look half bad either. It's clean, smells good too. I didn't taste it though. Got a little banger right there. I call that patina. And uh, she does have a little weight reduction. She did a little bit of weight reduction there. And. Uh, ecosystem growing on the windows. There was an ecosystem growing on the rear tail panel also, but we sprayed a wasp nest. So that's going away rather quickly. Trunk has some extra parts in it, extra grill. There's the muffler. Uh, that's a muffler delete option on this car currently. Extra tail light lenses, extra tire, which is much better than the junk we pulled off of it. And Let's see, let's go inside here. Our wonderful interior. It does have a seat, which is better than uh, I expected. Terrible carpet, shag carpet, probably the original carpet. Woo, there's a wasp. She is not very happy. And now she's inside the car. There's the seat. We are gonna have to do something different about that before I drive it, or drive it too far. Rat's nest in the glove box, that came with it. Headliner is uh, is an option, and it's going to end up being a headliner delete. So here she is. Lots of work to go. We've got four days to get it going for our trip. Normally with something like this, I would try to get the engine at least turning over first, but we had a hard time getting it to rotate over, uh, which ended up being a seized water pump. So we ended up doing things a little out of order on this one. All right, so we are about a couple hours in now. We are making a lot of progress on this quick. Uh, here she is, we got ourselves a nice little canopy going on. Little $40 Walmart special. I can't argue with that one bit. So let me show you where we're at here. We've got new water pump in it. The coolant actually looked really good. Uh, but I bought it anyway. I bought a good handful of parts ahead of time, like all the brake rebuild kits, uh, wheel cylinders. I also bought a new master cylinder and some other stuff there. But got our water pump on. Uh, we're gonna need a few new hoses. The That's part of the heater core hosing. The distributor cap actually looks like brand new on the inside. Unfortunately, the point set is garbage. Uh, I did buy a new point set for that that is already here as well. Uh, carburetor's off. It is a little uh, one barrel. Uh, that's going to be soaking here pretty soon. So radiator's out. Radiator uh, didn't look, doesn't look half bad, but it is old and it's had a repair job on it. 
So basically, what we're going to do is if it holds water, we're going to use it. And somehow a bee's nest is somewhere around here. But new battery for it, that way we can actually look at all that stuff. Uh, yep, some extra parts up here. And then back here, we've been working on the drum brake rebuild, which this one's uh, pretty close to being done, actually. A little tip for you, if you're rebuilding drum brakes, or any kind of brakes for that matter, it is a good idea to only do one side at a time, because then you can use the other side as reference. So, that one hasn't been rebuilt. They actually don't look too bad, but those wheel cylinders are garbage. Uh, we also bought all new brake line because I want it to drive safely and I don't want to be stuck on the side of the road with no brakes. So this is our situation on the rear brakes. And hold on, wait. There. <laughs> if that gives you an idea of how terrible those brake lines are, they just broke right off of that wheel cylinder. So, those are replaced, brand new hardware kit. Uh, almost felt bad because the hardware kits that were in it were actually replaced probably not that long before it was parked. But rather be safe than sorry, especially driving it quite the distance. So, well, I've been working on the rear brakes. These gentlemen have got this pretty much put back together. There's, uh, this was in really nice shape. The belt's in really nice shape. We're gonna reuse those. I've got the fuel pump sitting in here. This thing is clean. It looks like it was recently replaced. You can still see the green paint on the little suction doohickey there that I'm butchering the name of right now. There's where we're sitting. Our tires are done at Discount Tire, who we're not sponsored by, but we'd like to be. So we are getting ready to run and pick those up. We have a few other miscellaneous things that we need to pick up. This will be our third visit to the parts store today, which is fine, I expected that. Just a few more things to pick up. We needed longer bolts for the new thermostat and thermostat housing. So that's gonna be good. built the carburetor twice because when I bought the car and bought the parts I was told that it had an aftermarket carburetor on it but it was one that was an option so I when I was on Rock Auto we looked and they had a Ford carburetor and they had a Holly carburetor well I figured well he said it wasn't something aftermarket so bought the holly kit 
it's a Ford carburetor. And then we went to the O'Reilly store in Nashville last night to buy the right one, got back, and it was also wrong. So we've been kind of reusing stuff, mixing and matching steels as best as we can to try and get it to go. So the carburetor still needs a little bit of playing with. So that's one of the tasks for today. So we are now officially over budget on this build. Reason being, these tires, thanks to Ford and thanks to society, who doesn't want 14 inch tires, they want 15, 16, 17, 18, and then you find fair lanes with like 26s and shit like that. Thanks to Ford, who made a 5 by 4 and a quarter inch bolt pattern for like not many years. So we couldn't even buy new wheels, and because 14 inch tires are not very popular, paid out the butt to get new treads on this in time. So here we are putting the spark plug wires on, and it's wonderful, except we didn't get one long enough to go to the very last cylinder. So. We are reusing one line off the old ones, and thank goodness it looks decent. So it should work, it should hold, but yeah, thanks Napa. explain to you the carburetor situation. So this is the one barrel carburetor we had on the car. It's a worn out piece of junk to begin with. But that's the one we had on the car. And this is the one that's supposed to be on the car, what it's supposed to have come with. There's a big difference other than the electronic choke. This car originally had a manual choke anyway, but those are two completely different carburetors. Now, there was an option to have either a Holley or a Ford carburetor on the car in 65, but this carburetor goes to a 73 Pinto. We had no idea. Makes sense why our carb kits didn't work. So, we're going to put this one on the car, and we're going to hope it gets it fired up first thing, because... We're supposed to be driving this back to Indiana tomorrow. Got the new carburetor put in. Ended up taking off the vacuum choke, going ahead and wiring up the manual choke that's already in the car. A couple adjustments, there's your zip time moment. Hooked up our throttle linkage here, so now we can use the pedal. And uh, we're getting ready to fire her up with the new carburetor for the first time.
one day before we're supposed to leave and we are dead in the water. So we have had issues with the carburetor, with spark, everything. Gotten as much figured out as what we can and we're still not getting anything. Uh, she spits and sputters and you know, we found out we had the distributor cap on backwards which that didn't help. That made it pop and make a bunch of fun noises but didn't make it run. Uh, rebuilt the rotating assembly as far as the not the rotating assembly. Rebuilt the distributor the components inside of it the points uh, the rotor redid all the spark plug wires checked half spark on every cylinder still not doing it have plenty of fuel getting to the carburetor the fuel pump actually runs magnificently uh, probably the best part of the car but the new carburetor we bought is not doing any good it's actually sitting over here now because it didn't make a difference. Actually, the old one that's from the Pinto, uh, we got better luck with. So it is currently on it, and I think we're done here. So the 65 Fairlane will probably not be driving home, but it'll be back and you'll see it again. You didn't think we'd give up that easy, did you? So basically, our issue was timing. Now, we were told the vehicle ran about 10 years ago, so we figured the timing would be close enough to where we wouldn't have to mess with it. It would at least start up. Well, that just wasn't the case. Uh, so a fellow named Hunter came over. He's got a couple mid-60s Fords that he plays around with. And after messing around with it for a little while, fixing the timing, boom, it fired right up. Now, what you're seeing here is... The new carburetor we bought for it is complete garbage. So we're actually putting the Pinto carburetor back on it. Now, we do have an issue with the Pinto carburetor. It's made for like a 1.8 liter engine or 98 CID, where this Ford engine's closer to 200 CID. So here we go.
Unfortunately, yard driving is all the further we got on this trip. Running this Pinto carburetor meant any time we stepped on the gas, it fell right on its face and died. We also didn't have any brakes, so even though we rebuilt all the drums and installed a new master cylinder, we were unable to bleed them due to a blockage somewhere up in the line. The trans got better the more we drove it, but really it's still questionable. Either way, I still call this a win. We brought back this car from life from where it sat for the last 10 years, and that's just based on what we know about it. It was last inspected by the state of Tennessee in 1991. Randy and I got to ride in the car for the first time ever, and he thoroughly enjoyed it. And, well, I got to add another car to the fleet. You will see the Fairlane again in another episode of KevBot's Garage.